What is up, my ninjas? I am Strident, and I'm here with another action figure review. This time, as promised, I am bringing you the uh, Soda Street Fighter Super Review. Uh, I'm going to do a kind of brief overview on all of the Street Fighter figures in the Soda line that I managed to get my hands on. And a couple of them are from the Resaurus line, as well as... Uh, a couple of them are uh, like uh, Goken is kind of a unofficial soda figure and then uh, I have some Resaurus figures and some uh, NECA figures as well um, as you can see I really love this line this is a line that I went through a lot of trouble tracking down because at the time that I got them they weren't really that popular not a lot of people knew about them yet so um, I was buying them up at cons so um, some of them actually like uh, Evil Ryu my uh, brother from another mother managed to get that for me for uh, several Christmases back so um, yeah most of these though I want to say the majority of them were finds at conventions and stuff that I picked up on eBay actually the only things I ever got on eBay um, but as you can see I have the uh, the Guile figures, both the NECA and the uh, Soda ones, and I already reviewed them, so I'm not really going to go over them too much. Um, I have the NECA Ryu in all his monkeyish glory, but uh, you know, I'm gonna. I figured I would get this done faster, and I'm going to start at the top. Everybody knows who Ken and Ryu are. They are the poster boys for Street Fighter. Um, most people start out playing as them or start out getting their asses whooped by them. Um, they are the basic characters and everything else kind of stems from these guys in some sense. Um, I, the first characters I ever played as were Chun-Li and Ken. I played as Ken first and then Chun-Li. Chun-Li made more sense, she was easier. Then I went back and I played as Ken and understood and learned how to play do the Dragon Punch. And then my game started to up from there. Then I went to Ryu. So, um, the cool thing about these figures is that there are several details that over the years in the video games, they've been lost. Like, if you look at Ken, um, he has a different gi than Ryu. It's clean. You know what I mean? And the edges are clean. Um, almost as if, you know, it's new. And he's rich, so he should have several of these things. Whereas Ryu still has, you know, the tattered and torn gi and uh it's cool that on these figures they managed to capture that this time around i think with the uh soda street fighter revolution figures uh all the shotos had the same clothes on so ken also had ripped sleeves and uh ryu had ripped sleeves and ripped pants and so did akuma I think Dan is Dan might be the only one that didn't and it, actually the more I think about it I think Dan had the same body as well which was another reason why I was turned off by those figures and I didn't bother to search for them because I felt like somebody was just trying to capitalize off of the fact that they knew Ryu, Ken, and Akuma already sell and they tried to you know cash in on that and I mean it's a business it's understandable but it just wasn't cool for me this pose nothing is supporting him um, that's another thing I like about these figures. Joints really tight. Um, the only problem that I can tell you off the bat with the Shotos the, is that because their gi is sculpted, the gi is a, it's a separate sculpted piece sculpted out of a softer plastic similar to their hair and like any hanging details, you can't really utilize the ab crunch. So um, unlike most people who like Street Fighter though, um, my favorite character is still Ryu. At first, I hated him because he was kind of another one of those symbols of Japanese supremacy in video games and uh, then in, in the anime and whatever else. But then the more I thought about it, he represents a lot of what I've trained in. You know, Masoyama had a similar uh, philosophy to martial arts to Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee was my inspiration, and I trained in Jeet Kune Do because of it. And uh, 
a lot of Ryu's principles of martial arts in Jeet Kune Do. Essentially, they're the same principles of Jeet Kune Do, which is cool to have a Japanese perspective on this all-encompassing philosophy. Um, I just dig the fact that Ryu doesn't talk a whole bunch of crap. He's very simple in his approach, and he lets his actions speak for him. And I love the fact that also he is a good person. It's not like there's no malice in him, essentially. And the only malice that is in him is manifested in the uh, Satsui no Hadu, which, you know, everyone knows what that is if you know about Street Fighter, which would be the uh, murderous intent. And yeah, forgive me if I sound kind of slow. I've been uh, putting away a few drinks and it's late. And this week has been one of those weeks, it just, it's busy. But uh, I love Ryu's design, I love the way Soda managed to capture, like, the, it feels like this Ryu is right from the transition from Alpha to Street Fighter 2. He's not quite as large as Ryu was in Street Fighter 3, but I will get to that later. But uh, I dig the same thing with Ken. Ken feels like it's the transition from two to three. If you look at his gloves, and the fact that he actually has a haircut, and not just a He-Man mullet like he used to have, I, I dig that about this figure. Um, with uh, Ryu, a lot of details on Ryu are, uh, most of them are sculpted in. And the same goes for Ken. You know, besides the gi, everything is sculpted. I dig his expression because Ken is a little pompous and a little arrogant and you get that when you look at the toy. I dig their big old feet because if you look at Bengus' artwork or Nishimura Sensei's artwork, same situation and it's really awesome that you know they kept that there. Akiman had it to some degree but it was exaggerated by the other two. Um, uh, even Alvin Lee who imitates Bengus put all that stuff there and you could tell that the designers actually had the love for the characters involved when they made this you know you can tell you look at the details Ryu's belt I will I'll show it to you up close the the characters on there are, are they're present and I love the fact that they did that um, he came an extra hand so he could assume his fireball pose um, unfortunately they didn't put um, shoulder joints you know how some of the marvel legends have those shoulder joints for those wide arms back or arms together out in front poses you can't do that with Ryu. um but you can you know kind of emulate certain things you know like his ending in uh street fighter alpha one um you can kind of see on the belt the little japanese characters i love that um I love the fact that the main accessory Ryu has is his duffel bag. And you know, once you saw Street Fighter the movie in uh, the 90s, Street Fighter 2 the movie, the animated movie, this just needed to be with every Ryu figure. And strangely enough, they haven't been putting them with every Ryu figure. But I've had, what, three Ryus, I think? Yeah, because I have the uh, Evil Ryu, and Evil Ryu came with one as well. So I gave the, a duffel bag to this Ryu, and I have two other Ryus, and I gave one to the older version of Ryu. These are the accessories, the extra hands, a screaming head, and his uh, duffel bag. Um, I kind of wish that there was some kind of fireball accessory so you can imitate that, but you know, whatever. A cool thing about this figure that probably wasn't intended is I kept mine on a shelf for a long time and for whatever reason when I dusted I somehow managed not to get his you know gi from not to keep it from getting dirty but if you notice it got dirty in the key places that make it look kind of like a real gi you know it's it, it looks kind of I don't know sweaty and dirty to some degree which is kind of cool it, it's especially noticeable in the back, which I'll show you in a second. But uh, notice how big his hands are. Notice how big his feet are. They're large, but they're not impossibly large. So it doesn't look stupid, you know? Um, I love it. Now, um, as I was saying before, if you look on his belt, you can see there are um, kanji. 
those were the characters I was referring to. Uh, Kaze, Hayashi, He, and Yama. Uh, all together, they make, in, they make up uh, Furin Kazan. And uh, it's supposed to be a... Uh, uh, it's some, it was a, something they pulled from the art of war. And it dictates how you should conduct battle. As fast as the wind, quiet as the forest, daring as fire, and immovable as the mountain. And Ryu is definitely the embodiment of all these things. Now, as I was saying earlier, you look at Ryu's gi, look at the back of it. You can see that dirt has accumulated on this gi. And here he is standing up in the, kind of one of his little classic poses from the old Street Fighter II Turbo artwork. Um, this is just a happy coincidence that mine ended up dirty, and I think that's how Ryu should be. If you saw my um, Ultimate Street Fighter design, I put a lot of dirt in that image because um, I felt like he, he, if he's wandering all the time and he's not washing his gi as often as he would if he was at home, he'd be dirty. So it makes me happy that my figure was able to, you know, resemble, you know, or carry some of that because I just never bought the pristine look of the action figure. Um, I'm not going to put up the Street Fighter artworks that I'm referencing by a lot of the pictures that I have. Otherwise, this would be the longest review ever. But if you know Street Fighter, you would know the reviews. You'd know the images, I'm sorry, that I'm using in these reviews. Now, the Soda figures had a unique swivel joint. It was very sim similar to uh, Revel Tech. I mean, not Revel Tech. Wow. The, uh... Whew. The Trigun figures by, uh... Naito. I forgot what the company was. Um, I think it started with a K. Um, they also had the, uh... The toe swivel. Um, it was pretty cool because, you know, these figures actually could hold themselves up on their own, you know, with their own weight. Um... If they, uh, if you bend at the toes, you could actually use that when you set them up in a stance because the way that their foot swiveled, all these things work in unison. Uh, they had double jointed knees, so kneeling down like such, it worked, you know. And for a lot of the kicks, they cock their legs back or chamber their legs a certain way, and you get that. Um, and nothing looks awkward. That's the thing. You have subtleties in how the joints work. Um, I was impressed from day one, and Ken and Ryu were, were not the first Street Fighters I got. Um, Ken was amongst the first. I want to say Ken was about the third character I got. The first was T-Hawk, the second was uh, Vega, and the third was Ken. Uh, I just love the engineering on these figures, and like I told you earlier, in the end of my previous uh, rant or review, or one of the previous two, um, all the Shotos, Ken, Ryu, Evil Ryu, and then Akuma and Gukin have the same uh, articulation and sculpt. So, um, Ken and Ryu, I'm not going to review both separately and go over their articulation because they're pretty much the same figure with a head swap and difference in their uh, sculpted clothing. So, um, you know, obviously and their paint job, but, uh, here he is with his hurricane kit coming out of it too. Like you can see that like just about any of the poses that you see them in, in the game, you can do with these figures. That's what tripped me out the most about these figures because I was sitting there at Comic-Con playing around with Street Fighter figures. We, we were up, me and the rest of my, um, the company at the time, we were up in the, um, the hotel room geeking out talking about stuff and then playing with our street with the street fighter figures and marvel legends and hellboy figures and stuff and i'm sitting here like dude look and everybody's tripped out like damn he can actually do all those poses but he can't do the fireball instead he does kind of a how old soul cold cat from uh you know the uh sakazaki family but you know it gets the point across depending on the artist this is kind of what it looks like anyway and then you know no ryu story would be complete without a uh, a mention of, like I told you before, the how do of murderous intent. And Ryu is struggling with that. He's always struggling with it. And this is no different. So a cool thing about this figure is his uh, skin tone is extremely similar to that of evil Ryu. So if you put 
the evil Ryu head on regular Ryu's body, you end up with this look, and then you can just switch over to the actual evil Ryu. Uh, and I love the kanji, the kanji on his back. It's crazy, and it's awesome, and it's beautiful. And many of you are probably like, if it's so awesome, what's it mean? It stands for either annihilation, destruction, or termination. It's, it's several things. But it comes from metsu, it comes from mie, from uh, the Chinese word. Um, or mie. Um, but as you can see, the figure is slick. There's like dirt and dust actually painted on his um, gi. The thing I don't like though is if you look at his like kind of under his arm, for some reason this figure, the quality control wasn't as good as with the others because just putting his arms up and down, you get a lot of wear on the uh, the lower underarm portion of the gi and that bothered me a lot but you know I don't really use Evil Ryu that much um, yeah here's a little bit of a close-up of and here's another close-up um, you can kind of see some of the dirt and the dust and things some of its painted detail some of its real dust but um like I said the figures nice I don't like the paint used for um, destruction a lot annihilation or whatever it says on his back it's too kind of faded and I heard the bootlegs with the crazy you know the two-pack with the psycho bison and the psycho you know evil Ryu where they have the grin that the paintwork is way better but you know I've never I never saw them so I haven't worried about them I love that their headbands even though they're same well they're similar that they flow the Evil Reuse was made of a cheaper material. You can see it doesn't have the gloss, it's kind of a matte color. But just about everything else about these figures is exactly the same, so there's really not too much else for me to point out. I, uh, like I said, I have fun playing with them. I'm glad I have them. I always imagine Evil Ryu as kind of like a, uh, I mean, it's supposed to be an internal struggle, so it would have been cool to have you know, accessories that come with regular Ryu that, you know, kind of allow you to emulate that struggle, you know what I mean? But, uh, it's an awesome figure. There's not really much to complain about. If you ever get a chance to come across, uh, or come across both of these guys, pick them up. They're totally worth it. Um, any of the Shotos, they're really worth it, you know? Um, don't pay too much for them, because the original Ryu, which is the one you see there, um, sometimes goes for like almost a hundred bucks in some places on amazon i've seen him on the high end was a hundred and something maybe two and on the low end he was like 30 something to 40 bucks so you know be careful when you know you go after these figures um if you have to get one of the ones that's in an off color then it shouldn't be a problem these are all the reviews i have and in the back you see the one from the uh snk versus capcom 2 collection I actually have a bunch of figures from that collection what I dig about these figures and coincidentally the fact that I have two in white and two in black um, I dig the fact that even though it's different companies that made you know all these figures they managed to keep many of the details extremely on point and that's something I've been complaining about with uh, I've been complaining about the lack of this with your Marvel Legends and you know people always wonder why I keep on telling you that this figure line is the best it's that the figures are on model almost every time and to me that's the way it should be I mean it's very simple to just look at the artwork and emulate what the artwork shows um, so yeah you know with that in mind these figures are totally worth it I'm not saying that if you see them for a crazy expensive price that's you know over the top that you should pay it i'm just saying if you see them for a reasonable price then you know put the money in and get them if you can afford the crazy you know prices then you know do it see their feet all of them got big feet the neck of one takes the cake of course um but you know all, all in all they're pretty cool and i dig the fact that the older you which is the one in the center or you know second from the center you know, moving towards the right, uh, kind of looks more the part. Um, Akuma. Now I'm getting to the bigger Shonos. Akuma is huge, and so is his brother, um, Guken. Um, both of them have the bigger Shoto body type, which is what they used for the Revolution 
versions of Ryu and Ken, and I hate those characters' heads. They look a little goofy and too anime-like and not enough like any artwork that I've seen of them, any good artwork, you know? Um, I'm not really going to go into detail with these guys because the articulation and everything is the same. The Neko Ryu, there's not too much else to say except that he has extra hands. He comes with the fists and he comes with the open hands so he can do the Hadouken. And he has the shoulder joints so you can actually put his hands a lot closer to make the Hadouken. You can't quite get the like 100% Hadouken, but you get it much closer than the one that the uh, soda one can do. That's a good reason to own this figure because besides that, he's kind of ugly. You know, the whole Street Fighter 4 look is ugly. Now the SNK vs. Capcom 2 one is pretty cool because he's bigger, he's pretty pulsable, but they didn't sculpt the lower portion of his gi out of soft material, so moving his legs around, uh, the, the gi gets in the way and you kind of damage him, so he only looks good standing still. Um, and now on to some of the other characters, so you can kind of see what else is going on here. Um, I, like I told you, T-Hawk was my first, you know, entry into this, this, you know, line, and, uh, he was an amazing figure, so I had to get the other figures, you know? Um, Akuma, I'm gonna go into a little bit more about Akuma. This is actually Shin Akuma. I couldn't find regular Akuma. And then when I did find him, I just was like, you know, I'm not going to spend money on another version of this character that used to cause me so much pain and suffering when I was learning how to beat Tur Super Turbo. Um, I mean, I did get to a point where I could house him any time, but, you know, he was a prick. But uh, the Shin Akuma, really only difference between him and the regular Akuma is the fact that he has white hair. And that um, I think this version comes in the black and the regular Akuma does not. And uh, instead of his back saying, I can't even remember if his back says, yeah, his back says something else, something like uh, murder, something like that. There's Ken. Ken is pretty cool, like I said, simple differences in comparison to Ryu. The main things are he has the clean edges on his gi. Um, he also has the gloves that go all the way up to his like fingers, as opposed to the gloves that just have the padding that sit on his, uh, you know, the top of his hands or the backs of his hands or fists. Um, here he is doing a 540 since he's the kicker of the two. He kicks more. Um, I always dug the fact that they gave them these transparent energy things for the Dragon Punch people. And there's a couple people and there's a couple other you know, transparent parts that you get to. It's nice how the, the weird transparent nature of this thing and the multicolored transparency gives you the illusion of flames once you have his finger or his hand through there. You know, the skin tone part kind of lights up that area and it actually looks like he's in motion and it's on fire. And I'm like, props to you guys for giving me accessories that are valid for this character. And that's the thing about these figures. This is the extra head that they gave us. It's Ken from Street Fighter Alpha. Now the only thing that would have set this off is if they gave him hands like Ryu's with those old school gloves because they didn't wear these gloves until Street Fighter 3. But to further add differences to the characters, Ryu has the simple back of your hand gloves whereas Ken has the gloved hands which would probably be more expensive. Not to say that Ryu wouldn't have a lot of money to get them but he wouldn't care about that you know. There's the ponytail and the infamous red sash or red ribbon. But uh, here's Ken's one of his extra hands. You saw it earlier. He was giving the thumbs up. Here he is giving the thumbs down. Um, I kind of wish that the face on, on that uh, figure or the extra head was happier, you know, because Ken is, is not really a, a serious character. But you still get the point, you know. And, you know, I dig it. I really dig it. It's, it's one of those little accessories that you think about and you're like, wow, that does make sense. So, you know, if you see Ken, pick him up. He's worth it. He's super worth it. 
Okay, you gotta have Ken and Ryu together. It doesn't make sense to have one and not have the other. Uh, even if you like one more than the other. Chun Li, first lady of fighting games. I had to have this figure. And it's cool because she's kind of an in between stage Chun Li. It's like Chun Li from the games from Street Fighter 2 when her legs weren't ginormous. You know? When she just had muscular legs. Now, if you look at her, like the, the NECA version has ginormous legs. And I don't know, I wanted it, but then I thought about it and I was like, you know what, I'm cool with this. The Play Arts Kai version looks awesome, it's just too big. But um, this figure came with extra hands, so she can assume a lot of her kung fu oriented styles. Um, just looking at the figure itself, there's so many details on her costume like on the the midsection there is the whole phoenix um sculpted it's not even just a print it's sculpted on her abdomen um the big old shoulder pad things they're soft so you can actually move her hands up and down and and they don't really get in the way um her uh her hands are interchangeable at the cuff so like the cuff is part of her arm and you push the little peg for her hands into that part her legs aren't too big her legs are just big enough that you get the idea that this woman has some powerful legs she can throw some kicks she definitely is skinnier though than the uh, depiction of chun li in like street fighter 3 especially because in street fighter 3 that woman had some legs but this works you know this feels a little bit more like what Chun-Li looked like when Akiman drew her, or some of the early Bengus work. Actually, when you look at some of the Bengus work from Alpha, you see that her legs are not super ginormous, they're just very muscular, very defined. Um, I found that with this Chun-Li figure, I could do just about any pose from the Street Fighter games. The only ones I had problems with were her, you know, button air fireball, and her what was another one? Because there was something else I tried to do. You can see here doing the spinning bird kick with no problem. Um, there was another one, though, and I can't remember it. But, you know, for the most part, just about anything you saw her do in those games, all the way to Street Fighter 3 and 4, she can do in this one. Um, or with this figure. And that's one of the things that I love about the figure. They didn't go overboard giving her joints that were unnecessary so she can't stand up. But note, over time... The, the type of paint that they used, if you make her do kicks a lot, her legs will kind of get slack. So you got to be careful about that kind of stuff. Here she is performing her little slaps from uh, Street Fighter 3. And there's her low medium uh, punch. Um, I don't know. The figure's just a stellar figure. I love the fact that she had two heads. The one smiling head and the one uh, straight face. Um, I kind of wish that she had the peace sign or victory, depending on where you're from. Um, instead, she only comes with fists and open hands. And, uh, you know, she comes with the two, the head that you see there and the happy, you know, goofy head that you saw earlier. Um, she is the right size and height in comparison to your other Street Fighter characters. She's taller than Kami, but she's not taller than Ryu and Ken which is awesome because they're on the smaller side. Um, she's only a little taller than Kami, which is cool because when you see her in the animes, they kind of put them about the same size, you know? But chun Li's a lot. She's a little bit taller. Um, Kami's another good one, and I'm going to be getting her soon. But honestly, this is like probably the best one of the best Chun-Li figures out there. Um, Playability-wise, I think she's better than the NECA one because NECA uses shitty plastic. Um, the Play Arts one, it costs 60 bucks. Now this Chun-Li, I've seen her for really cheap lately, but she was wearing one of the weird colors. So depending on which Chun-Li you like, you might be able to find this one for a reasonable price. Now Kami, this is one of my favorite characters. I used to her folks in the um, arcades with her when she first debuted in uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. But uh, this Kami, they did a good job 
recapturing the likeness of the character and then adding things that you saw in comics and in the different anime and stuff like that. I'm trying to get my hands on the Cannon Spike variation with the skates and all that and the machine guns and whatnot. But um, Cammy's one of my favorites. I always dig military characters because they don't do this because they enjoy beating people up. They do it because it's their job, you know? So when they're going into the tournament, they're not undercover, they're not doing whatever just to do it. They're doing it because they got to track down someone. Um, I have had a bunch of Cammy figures in the, over the years. I think I've had most of the ones that they've released that were worth buying. Like this is the Toy Biz Cammy from uh, the X-Men vs. Street Fighter line. And uh, it was cool because she came with that coat. And the coat's big enough that I could put it on the other, on the soda Cammy, and it doesn't look stupid. But the first one is the Killer Bee Cammy when she was working with uh, Shadow Law or Shadowloo, depending on which version of the series you pay attention to, or the words that you pay attention to. Um, Toy Biz one wasn't half bad. And there is the Resaurus one. She was ginormous, but all the figures were ginormous. But they were not in scale with one another, and that's something that bothered me. I did not like the fact that they weren't in scale. Um, but, you know, the soda, the soda one can imitate just about anything from the others. Um, and you know the colors are a little bit subdued in some areas on the soda one especially her skin tone and her hair whereas the soda one looks pretty dead on like the artwork that they were imitating gotta give him props for that but Cammy does not lose anything when it comes to posability she can do everything that you've seen her do from the cannon spike to the uh, cannon drill to her, uh, you know, jumping kicks. That's a jumping medium right there. Um, there's so many, there's just so much you can do with the figure, you know? And if you got a good stand, you can really go off with the figure. Like you can see here, this is an okay stand. I don't have, I want to get one of the fancy ones with the clasps and the bendable, you know, arm holding, you know, to hold them up. And then she's about to spin and hit you with the spinning knuckle. Um, I really dig the fact that they were very simple and straightforward with the design. They didn't go overboard. They put the hair in the right area and the scar on the, in the right portion of her face. It's on the left side of her face. Right now it's, it's our right. Um, I like the fact that they gave her the fists, the chopping hands, like her stance from Street Fighter 4, which at the time that this came out, there was no art about what her stance was going to be in Street Fighter 4. We didn't even know we were going to get one. Anyway, she can assume that stance, and then she also has the peace or victory hands for her victory, which I was like, damn, they could have done that with Chun-Li, and that would have been awesome. But, you know, I'm not complaining. These figures are awesome. They didn't go off like too far away from what the figures actually the characters are in the, the video games they stay pretty on point um she also has like i showed you on that first picture the eye and ear piece um she's very posable <laughs> so there's hours of fun to be had with the different poses you can get her in and the different situations you can you know put her in fighting you know shadow members or uh you know various street fighters and whatnot there she is in the cannon drill pose. The only gripe I do have with this figure, she can't put her arms straight up all the way because for whatever reason, the way they sculpted them, the bicep kind of gets in the way. So that's as far as it can go. But as you can see, she's got double jointed elbows, so there's no problem putting her arms up and having one, you know, kind of behind her hand and the other one just straight out. So, you know, overall, there's little to complain about with this figure. Her waist swivel works perfectly, her ab crunch works perfectly. Um, the only thing you can't really do with her is put her in like Spider-Man looking poses, you know. She can't stoop down the way she does in Street Fighter 4 or actually in uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3 before she does the, uh, not the spin dive smasher, but the, uh, the killer bee assault. But uh, just about everything else you can get her to do. And that's what a good figure does. It shouldn't be something that you have to struggle to play with, or you have to take the figure apart and tweak it in order to play with it. It should be ready to go 
from the uh, onset. As soon as you get a chance, you open it up. You should be able to put her in the poses you want to put her in and have fun with the damn toy. It's that simple. And, you know, Soda, they managed to get that in spades. And I got to give them props for that because a lot of toy companies set out to do these things and then they don't do it. They don't succeed. They give you kind of a, a decent figure, you know, but it's not fully playable and posable and collectible. This thing, th these figures are so, I don't know, they're collectible, they're playable, the whole nine. And, you know, I got to give them props for that. Just looking at these figures as I'm doing this review makes me so geeked that I have them because they're so much fun to play with. You can see that the creators had fun doing this. The sculptors had fun emulating the great artwork by Bangus and Nishimura and uh, uh, Akiman and Aikino and, you know, etc., etc., etc. And they did such a good job. Um, Kami actually is not that expensive. Um, I've actually seen the green suit, this very same one, for about 20 or 30 bucks on Amazon. So, you know, if you get a chance, feel free, pick her up, she's worth it. I mean, she definitely looks just as good as some of the Marvel Legends, better than most of the female Marvel Legends. She's worth it. Now, um, one of my younger ninjas has been, you know, watching and waiting for me to put up the review for Ibuki because that's one of his favorite characters and he just recently got this figure and Ibuki is one of my least favorite characters and this figure is not one of my favorites of this line but it's still a good figure um, Ibuki came later on in the game she showed up in Street Fighter 3 um, she was the ninja of the group and she was like a full-on ninja not like Vega before where it was kinda if you knew the lore you knew that Vega was kind of based on Geki's style. She is a whole different ball game. Um, the one thing that I have to complain about with this figure is where most of the soda figures are the right scale. She's off. She's really tall. And I'll show you more about that later. But she's very poseable. And she's pretty fun to play with. I did do one major tweak. And I took the... Uh, the top of her she had this big weird ponytail thing that used to get in the way and I cut that down and gave her a smaller ponytail thing and I'll show you more on that later but just about every pose I could think of from Street Fighter 3 she can actually take all those poses once again this is one of the things that I love about these figures is that Soda gave them the right articulation that's specific to that individual figure. I mean, there is a general articulation that you see amongst all of these figures, you know? Ab crunch, the swivel on the feet, the interchangeable hands, you know, the, the head on a ball joint that doesn't really, in all cases, do something. But overall, all of the figures have those same similar joints. It's just the level to which you can manipulate that is different depending on each figure. And you usually can do all the stuff that you see them do in the game based on that articulation. Examples are like, um, Adin cannot kick straight up, whereas she can, so can Chun-Li, and so can uh, Fei Long, you know? And it's, it's weird. It, it, it almost feels like it's something that they did by accident. Um, but Ibuki's pretty cool in the sense that, like, her sculpt is on point. She looks very much, you know, on model. Um, she comes with uh, kunais that actually make sense that she can hold. She comes with fists, uh, fists, holding hands, and the ninja magic hands. <laughs> so she comes with three sets of hands. She comes with two of each. And uh, she also comes with the kunai daggers. And she comes with, I think she comes with two of those, and she comes with her uh, brethren uh, raccoon. Um, I tried to do a little quick fight scene with her and Remy. Now, see, she should be way smaller than this. And I'm going to show you another picture from the game so you can just see the difference. Now, this is the game. And you can see that clearly she's standing up straight 
and she is a whole head and shoulders, maybe more, smaller than Remy. He kind of begs you to wonder what it is that happened, what made them not make her so much smaller than Remy, or make her, you know, she should be about Sakura's size, but somehow they didn't feel like doing that, you know, which is kind of strange to me. Um, she also came with an, a second mask, so she could actually pull down the mask. Um, that's what I'm using right there, and you see her, she's, she's about the same height as Ryu, which doesn't make sense, because she's clearly smaller than Ryu. She's actually a lot smaller than Ryu. So, there she is with her, uh, ninja magic hands. Um, I don't know. The figure's a mixed bag for me. I got her because I got a good deal on her and Fei Long and Remy all at the same time. Uh, from Corner Store Comics, so I was kind of happy about that. Um, so I just picked them up all together. They were on clearance, actually, which was weird. And this was years ago. I'm like, wow, really? You got too many of these guys? Yoink! I will gladly take them off your hands. But, uh, so you can do all your ninja-ish stuff. You can do anything you saw from Naruto. There's an image of the top of her head where you can see that I removed the long ponytail thing that she has in the game and gave her a smaller, more durable thing because it was always getting, you know, bumped into and stuff. Um, now, Alex was also in Street Fighter 3, but here are the other soda, I mean, uh, resource figures that I have that are in my Street Fighter section. Now, I'm not going to do a, a big review on Alex because he has, like, no articulation. Very simple, but he looks so freaking cool. They actually got that off. The same goes for Charlie or Nash, depending on which version of Street Fighter Alpha you played. And he looks really cool, and it's nice to be able to have Nash and Guile together in my collection. Um, and there's the Resource Cami that I showed you previously. Um, it's just a nice figure. Um, one thing about Nash that I'm thinking about doing, because I saw other people do it, is taking the head off of this one and putting it on the Guile from uh, NECA that's wearing guy, uh, Nash's clothes. Um, another cool thing about Alex is that he is pretty damn big. I mean, I know he's a little smaller than Sagat in the game, but he kind of, it's cool that the figure is huge too. Birdie. Birdie's a big dude. Pretty big dude. Huge figure. I always have him hunched over and everything, like in his stance, so I forget how large the figure really is, or how tall he really is. But you can see he's a bulbous, muscular beast of a character. It's just a shame that he's such an idiot. But he is a beast in the game, especially in Alpha 2. Alpha 2, that figure, that dude is, is just a monster. Um, I dig the fact that they gave him a real chain connected to his cuffs. That's awesome. They gave him the real chain, and it has a noose on the other end, you know, or a loop. So you could actually, you know, tie it around somebody's neck and have him slamming them. And that is awesome. You know, these are the little details that set this line apart from everyone else. And it's a shame that the line went down the crapper, you know. I love the fact that with most of these soda figures, when you put them next to... The, the you know different characters in the line for the most part it's just like playing with that character in the game because scale issues are there or I'm sorry there are no scale issues for the most part um, attention to scale has been paid um, the details are there I mean you can literally pose them like I said with several of these other guys you can pose them exactly the way that you see them you know positioned and posed in the game and that's super important. Also, if you feel like, you know, posing them according to, like, their intros or things like that, they give you the tools to do that. And that just makes me happy. I mean, think about how many times you got Spider-Man figures that have been made that did not have the Thwip hand. It's happened a few times, which it should never happen, you know? Think about how many times you got Iron Man figures that didn't have two open hands so that they could shoot the repulsors, you know? Or Batman figures that can't hold shit but came with a bunch of batarangs. But then here, this company that disappeared, you know, as far as, well, the company's still there, but this line that disappeared, everything was done right. 
paint apps are perfect. I mean, there were a couple times that I saw versions of some of these figures that were kind of sloppy as far as paint goes. But overall, these figures were done well. I mean, look at the, the texture on his denim jacket and his jeans. All the silvers on his rings and his belt buckle. and You know what I mean? Like... These are all details that help make the character look like he just stepped off of a printed page, you know? He stepped out of animation and into real life. And all that shit was... It was done right here. I mean, even the texture of his skin, it's smooth, but there's a light wash on top of it to give him a little bit of depth, but not to make him look dirty like most of the old Marvel Legends. Um, even on his boots, they look worn. You know what I mean? And they even painted socks underneath those clogged boot things that he's wearing. I mean, like, you, you really can't ask for too much. And no articulation was lost with this figure. He has the exact same points of articulation as Ibuki and some of the other guys. It's just they don't work the same. You know? It works a little bit differently for him. His head has a good full range of motion, which is nice. Uh, his arms do, and there's some ginormous arms. It's just an awesome thing to see when it's done right. I love the fact that even though he's typically hunched over more because that's his stance, standing him up straight, you reveal how much figure you ended up with, you know? And Birdie wasn't high on my list as far as characters go. Uh, Blanca, he's another one of the bigger uh, dudes that they paid such good attention to detail with. Um, the only issue I had with Blanca is that on his anklets, there was... Uh, there were these two little pins or, or like loops that I guess uh, imaginary chain was supposed to have been connected to and somehow they fell off I think one time he fell off of my uh, shelf and there you go or someone fell on him I can't remember what it was that happened but those broke but they're the smallest pieces of detail on this figure I love the fact that they gave him you know you see him in the game eating uh, you know fruits and stuff I mean I'm Brazilian, and I know we don't have green wolves, so I never understood where the fuck they came up with this idea from. It was like some lightweight bullshit, uh, I don't know, semi-racist throwback to the Hulk. I mean, but whatever. Um, and Blanca doesn't share. But, you know, the design is nice, and, you know, I was happy to get this figure. I, I remember getting this one at Comic-Con. Um... He's very poseable, and that's another thing. No matter how big or small the characters are, they never lose posability. And I love the fact that, like, some of the characters have details that should limit, and if they were made by another company, it would limit their posability. But here, Blanca's just posable as everyone else. And you see he's tall, but he's not taller than the big guys, you know? Because in the game, when Blanca stands up fairly straight, you know, with his arms stretched up to the sky, you know, growling and shit, you see that he is pretty tall. But then you see him next to smaller people, and you're like, hey, look at him. He's towering over them. Next to even the mid-sized people, he's pretty damn big, which is awesome. It's as if the sculptors were paying close attention to the details of scale, along with all the other details that they were paying attention to. And that makes me so happy, because that's the way, personally, that I think it should be done. Um, as you can see, one of the loops is still there on his anklets, but on the uh, left anklet, it fell off. Remy. Remy was a favorite of mine. In Street Fighter Three. that is my go-to character uh, next to Ryu, of course. Um, I always had, was more comfortable with the charge characters. Um, Remy is probably the fastest charge character they've done in a Street Fighter. Fastest of the, the Guile style, you know, Street Fighter uh, characters. Um, his design re reminds me of Shaggy and Iori Yagami, which is pretty obvious that that's who he was uh, modeled after. His voice sounds like him. Um, they just didn't make him as insane. But if you look at the placement of color, minus the white shirt that Iori wears, um, Remy is wearing the same shades and everything, just different hair. Um, I dig Remy's design. His jacket is badass. Um, 
At first, I thought he was just a generic pretty boy, which got on my nerves. But then the more I read uh, about the character and how he has ties to another Street Fighter character from the past, I was always like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I, I, I like to imagine that his pops is Nash. But I know that I think in the canon, his pops is actually um, Abel. So, um, I don't know. If you care about that kind of stuff, then, you know, there you go. But uh, Remy's another one. He was actually one of the only figures that I had real breakage with out of the package. One of his hips, I think it's his left hip, was uh, gummy and whatnot. I put him in the fridge to, you know, kind of harden everything, harden the paint. Turned uh, his uh, leg at the hip because there is a swivel right at the hip joint and the leg just popped off. So I just glued it back on and I still pretty much have, it feels as though I still have full uh, mobility with this guy and his posability and stuff. Cause Remy doesn't really do that. He's dynamic, but he's not like super agile, you know? Or his, his poses don't require overly extended, you know, positions or poses. It doesn't, you, you can get him to do cool stuff without overdoing it, you know? Um, his fighting style is real straightforward, so, you know, imitating that stuff is really easy. Um, Remy came with, uh, let's see, chopping hands, splayed open hands, and fists. Then he came with uh, an extra head with the cool, you know, s s like, swishy hair. And uh, it's cool because when you put him in action poses, like so, it just sets it off. And these are the little details that I wish that when we get Marvel Legends... You know, and sometimes I wish when we get DC Universe Classics, even though there are a couple DC Universe Classics with multiple heads, um, I just wish they were characters that I actually really liked, you know? But Remy, they, they got it off with Remy. Um, Remy has, uh, like I said, the same points of articulation. He has restrictions, though, when it comes to putting his hands up. I don't know, a lot of them have that issue, where if you try to put their hands all the way up, you can't because of the way the shoulders were sculpted. Um, they did use a different plastic on the shoulder pads, but, you know, you still have problems. Um, like I said, I like to connect Remy and Nash because they have similar mannerisms. Although Remy is a little bit more flamboyant, it just looks cooler to me. Um, and it, it makes sense because Nash was so, like, you know, about his work and not much else. So much so that Guile was even going to fight him. You know, in Alpha 3, you have to fight um, Charlie in order to stop him from doing what he's doing. Or to make him come to his senses. The details on this figure are really nice. I mean, there's zippers on his jacket in the front. There are rings on his fingers. I know this isn't the most clear picture, but, you know, you can see there's a ring there, you know? And on the other hand, it's multiple rings. I just dig the fact that they were able to put in so many of the details. And these are details that in a game, they exist. In the artwork, they exist. And it just sets off the character's design. His hair looks cool. The, there's no slop on the really small silver things like his buckle and his rings. Um, it's just a well done figure. Very well done figure. And you know, if you're a fan of Street Fighter 3, this was one of the few offerings from Street Fighter 3. I think that this line only had, uh, apart from the Shotos, there were only two other characters from Street Fighter 3 that made it into this. And that kind of pissed me off because there's a lot of cool characters, you know? 12? Can I get a figure of 12? It would be so easy to make. Um, can I get a, a real Alex figure? I actually saw Soda's prototype for Alex, um, and we never got it, you know? I don't understand what happened, and I've been trying to look up information about this stuff forever but i don't know but uh you know remy is definitely a win you know definitely a, a solid figure like an eight out of ten uh bison now bison um i went through a lot to get this figure and he was one of the last ones i got um i ordered bison off of ebay and it was the first thing i ever bought off of ebay and someone in like chile had my my information for my bank account and the only way they could have got this is me signing up for my PayPal account and all that craziness 
I'm like, what the hell? So my bank calls me and is like, uh, we put a hold on your account because you were just in here, but we saw a charge, uh, an attempted charge in Chile. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? So after this fiasco, I never screwed with eBay again. But uh, it's kind of worth it in a sense. This figure goes for like two or three hundred bucks online. And you see he looks every bit as imposing as a lot of the artwork does. I was hoping to eventually get the, the skinnier bison as well because then he could fold his arms and do all the things that this like super muscular version can't do. Here he is uh, confronting Hyo Kusanagi also from the SNK vs Capcom 2 toy line. Um, and here he is confronting Iori Adami also from that toy line. Um, like I said, fighting games man. I, and I know the merchandise, like I said before, doesn't actually tell the tale, but I would play out some of the stuff that I, story-wise, that I liked in those games. Here he is attempting the Psycho Crusher, and this is as good as it gets with this figure because he does not have the kind of posability that other characters have because he's so fucking huge. You know, it's almost a wonder that in the game they were able to allow him to position himself in such a way that he can grab his arms and stuff because he is huge. He is one healthy dude. But uh, it's really cool that they gave him that transparent uh, energy to put over his hand. I managed to get a hold of both the Player 1 and Player 2 colors. When I used to play Champion Edition and uh, Hyper Fighting and all of that, I used to use the Gray and Red Bison all the time. And now I see that one online for a pretty high price. I think it's about 200 bucks also. I'm actually selling that one on uh, Amazon, so if anyone's interested, you know, hit me up. And here are all the bosses together. Um, I love this crew, this pairing, even though I, I, I like that Sagat is not officially a villain. If you pay attention to his actual story, Sagat doesn't actually do evil things. And when, when he does things that are questionable, it's usually because of Bison. So for those of you who know them from Japan, you have the Dictator, Boxer, Claw, and Patch, um, or Kickboxer, um, which is Bison, you know, uh, Balrog, Vega, and Sagat. Um, you look at the face sculpt on this dude. He came with two heads and two pairs of hands, splayed open hands and uh, you know, fists. But his head sculpt was awesome. Here he is facing off with Akuma, um, who also has an awesome head sculpt because he has a very uh, unique face. And these are the two big bads from the Street Fighter series. You know? It doesn't really get much badder than this until Gil, which I was really wanting a Gil figure, but you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens. You can remove the cape, so um, you know when shit's really getting real. <laughs> You can just pull those two pegs out, and uh, Bison can fight without his cape. Um, also, I guess if you would like to replace the, the cape itself, which I never bothered with because I like the cape the way it is, um, you can do that. I used the gray one because it was easier to pull out. Um, the uh, silver on the, uh, the red one, I don't know, it was really difficult. I mean, I eventually got it off, and you'll see. but. Uh, you know, now he can he can take his cape off and show them what he's really, you know, made of, like he did in the end of the 90s Street Fighter 2 animated film. And that's one of the best fights ever. Here's the red bison with the actual without his cape, you know, gesturing them to come on. Kui! Um, I like the fact that they gave you that small detail. Because a character like Bison is all about being badder and tougher and more imposing, I'm sorry, than the character that he's going up against. And it looks good, you know? <laughs> Here's the only other Bison, well, one of the only other Bisons I had before. I had the one from Hasbro that was in the 20th anniversary style, I want to say, of G.I. Joe. Um, this thing was a joke. This is from the X-Men vs. Street Fighter line really 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 bad figure i mean it did the job but it was ugh, horrible figure 